Yes, I can see her name, sir. So. Okay. okay. And Walter appeared and then he, he, he disappeared. I don't know where he is. I'm glad that Walter is with us. I like his in Yes, in a very valuable uh, uh, participant. Sessions we have because he different in Yes. Now your voice is the uh, Sounds Can broken. you hear me well? Because I'm not. Is it broken up? Now it's now it's good. Is my voice all right? Okay, because your voice is also. No, sometimes it's it's breaking up. So I don't know what it it's. Um, maybe it's go to meeting uh, settings or something. Pauline, can you hear us clearly? Yes, I can. But I'm just trying to fix it. A little bit in another uh, cover. Very good. So it's easier to to see you. What's the weather like in Poland today? Gordana, can you hear me? Gordana, can you hear me? You don't seem to be able to hear me. Gordana, hello. I can hear you now. Oh, I did, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, fine. Very good now. <laughs> uh, okay, here's Pauline. Very good. Okay. Okay. What's the weather like in Poland today? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We had 27 degrees. It's beautiful. No rain, clear sky. Right now it's a little cloudy, but it's really beautiful. And Pauline, for you? Well, over here it's suddenly a little bit cooler once more. It's raining, but we need the rain, so it's good. Um, and, um, well, Cordana, next month I will be visiting uh, Scandinavia. Oh, we will be traveling through oh. Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Is that a pleasure? Are you visiting Malmö? Malmö? No, we, we are not going to Malmö. Where, what is your okay. itinerary? Because I live in Malmö and we could meet. No, no, I, we are not passing uh, by. No, we are traveling from... Uh, um, from the Netherlands, of course, and we pass through Vuken um, in, in Denmark, and then from Helsingborg to Helsingborg, I suppose, or mm -hmm. vice versa. And then we travel um, to um, Stockholm, and then north of Stockholm we pass over to Norway, and then we visit Bergen and Stavanger and Kristiansand, and then we return to Jutland in Denmark, and then we return home. Is well, it's, it's a beautiful time to visit Sweden because it's, it's uh, not too hot and not too cold, so, so it's a beautiful time to visit Sweden. I know, I've been there several times before. Is, no. is this, this time we go with a friend. Is that purely a pleasure trip? Yeah, it's a trip by car we make. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've never been to Sweden, but I've been to uh, Denmark and Norway, and I love Scandinavia. Yeah, well, the countries are similar to each other. I'm going to uh, send uh, emails to others. Well, it's now it's still three minutes to go. Okay, I'll wait a little while. Hmm. And Walter hmm. checked in. I don't know what happened to him. And then we have... Uh, Maybe he's... Yeah, well, he, he sometimes has trouble with his computer. Um, mm. have, have you met um, Kathy? Have the two of you met Kathy? I haven't met her yet. But everybody else you know, let me see. Um, uh, Connie, have you both met Connie? Connie Dunn? I can't recall the names. Just the one you mentioned previously, Cordana. 
Um, Walter. Yes. I have. Well, Kathy, I heard from her this morning. Ah, here we are. Here's Connie. Can you see that on your screen too, that mm -hmm. she's arrived? Yes. I saw her and she oh, okay. Here you are, Connie. Hello, Connie. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Connie. Hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> okay, we're... We are almost there. Uh, yeah, we're missing Kathy and Walter. Yeah. And we are leaving already in the late in the afternoon. For, uh, yes, it, it's five o'clock at your um, your time also, Polly. Yes, it, it is. Yes. Uh, Kathy lives in Colorado, and Walter lives in uh, Michigan. And I had my elect Good morning. I had my electricity go out a little bit earlier, so if it does, I will plug in my old telephone. My and call you. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I'll, um, I'll send a new email to, oh, wait a second. Good morning. Ah, good. Okay. Good morning. Okay. Hi, it's Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Uh, is it just your voice or are we going to see you too, Kathy? I'm, wor I'm working on the seeing part. Um, I think it's making me download go to meeting, but I don't remember it doing it last time. <laughs> okay, your voice is uh, is even more important than your face. So, but see, <laughs> see if you can get your face. Okay, I'm working on it. Walter, I think Walter will check in later. Then I'll send him a, an email. I can see your email. Oh, there we are. Okay. There. Okay, I just sent Walter an email. Maybe that will help him. I can see you guys. Can you see me? No, we can't see you. No. Here you oh, okay. I must need to click on something else here. Hold on. Yes, there, there's a little camera on the left side of your screen. You can see it there. Did you find it? Okay, here, here we you. are. Ah, there. Very good. Okay, uh, I sent email uh, to Walter. So uh, let's get started now. Do you all know each other? Do you all know Kathy? No. Kathy, introduce yourself. Uh, where you live and how you got involved with this and, and uh, some details about yourself. Okay, um, I'm Kathy Von Barron. I live in Denver. And um, I ran across Andrew's uh, courses online somewhere. I can't even remember how long ago, Andrew. <laughs> it's been a while. And um, have come out to attend a couple of them in person. And I still kind of consider myself to be in um, Steiner Kindergarten. Um, but I'm learning a lot just very, very slowly. So um, I'm excited to be through this. I had read Frankel's book probably two or three times over the last probably 25 years. and. Each time I read it, it's like it's a brand new book to me, and so I really kind of enjoyed revisiting it again here. Now you're one of the persons that can that can uh, compare doing this online with uh, doing it for real, and we'd be very interested in your uh, opinion as to uh, what one lacks or, or or not in terms of what we're doing. Well, I, I would say there, there are definitely pros and cons to both. Um, for me, it's, it gets quite expensive time and money-wise to travel out to the East Coast, uh, but there's definitely a whole, different, um, a whole different feel to meeting people in person and you know, spending a whole weekend. Um, but on the other hand, I, I get to you know, meet more people this way, too. So um, each one has a different feel to it, and, and I think both have uh, both have uh, 
really good points to them. It would be hard to pick, but my budget would force me to stick with the video conferences. That's why we do, we don't do it uh, regular anymore. It's always online, and every month that's what we're doing online. And then, did you all read the the description of conscious conversations that Gordana? She's the one that wrote that, and I thought it was very excellent. And you all got a chance to read that, Pauline? Did you? No, I yes. didn't. Because I have to study until uh, the 10th of June. I have to study very hard and work next to it. No time for extra curriculum activities. Okay, Connie, you read that? Yes, I did read it. Um, uh, just, I'll just read it out loud for um, for Pauline. It's <clears throat> the the. First rule in conscious conversation is truly listening to the other. The second is relating to and building on what the other is saying. The third is sharing from self by letting the information flow through you, not only repeating facts and quotations from others. Four, not talking through your ego, not trying to convince or win the discussion by argumentation and I am right, you are wrong thinking. Five, being curious and accepting other people's views. Six, being honest with your intention. The classic insight sessions are not ordinary conventional lectures where one talks about facts and learns by argumentation. Conscious conversation is a method that leads to a higher form of insights by sharing by the sharing of information processed through the self. We want to know what you think, feel, and perceive when you study and discuss the material given to you with every course. This is what sets classic insights apart from other social media forum, forums. It is the information processed through you that is greatest importance and interest. We do not want you to repeat information we want you to create new insights through the classic knowledge we provide. It is all about evolving your consciousness through sharing it with others of like minds. Now, when I read that uh, a few times, I, I, again, I think it's excellent. It's really what we want to okay. strive to accomplish. But I also thought that this is why the old methods are no longer good. Lectures are no longer good. Now, Steiner, with his book, more than Frankl, Steiner, with his book, forces you to do this. And that's why one of the reasons it's so hard to read Steiner, because he's not giving you information, letting it out, because he very well understood just what uh, Gordana wrote. I mean, this is a process, a new process, and the reason for it is that we've evolved. So now we have stuff inside ourselves that we have to access and share with others. And this is what um, we want to do today and for the next, uh, and all our seminars are going to be based on exactly these principles. So thank you very much for that, Gordana. Very, very well presented, I thought. Thank you. <clears throat> the, the now, what I'd, I'd like to start off by having you all uh, tell us how you found the material, the lecture guide, which I think is excellent. I think that lecture guide is so well written and presented. So I'd like your uh, uh, your thoughts on the lecture guide and the Frankel book and the Steiner book, whatever they are. You know, whether what you couldn't understand or what you could understand, but let's, let's hear from all of you uh, about that. Uh, Kathy, you already started, so continue. Oh, okay. Um, I haven't gotten far in Steiner yet, um, and I I have to take his stuff really, really slow because I I either get like kind of clogged up and then I start daydreaming while I'm reading, and I find I read four pages and I haven't read a thing. Um, and I've I've read about halfway through Frankel and. I've like taken pages and pages of notes of things that struck me and oh yes exactly and you know things like that 
and I was even I was reading some more this morning and and I was struck by something that applied to the last eight years of, of what has been going on in my life and it's like wow that you know that kind of surprised me and the lecture guide um, I found it was it was a really great kind of overview of everything so as I'm reading about the the parts of you know where he's talking about Steiner's book I'm like okay that's exciting I'm looking forward to <laughs> except it takes me forever to get there so that's kind of where I am with it well that that's that, that's uh, very good and of course that's what this entails this is again this is not just facts given to you you have to Right. digest them and work it on yourself and, and that's a very good explanation of what the process is for you Kathy and, yes and, definitely and and I'm finding right now just just reading through through uh, Frankel's book that that I'm taking that kind of flow too even though I've read it before that it just you know I'm I, I read through something and it just strikes me you know it resonates and and so I start writing and writing and writing and so like I said I'm I'm probably not very far along with it, but it's, I'm really getting a lot out of it just because it's, I'm connecting with it, you know, with my own life, and I think that's the whole point here. So, very good. And and Connie, how about you? Well, I also enjoyed the guide, and um, I'm in the almost done with taking this class from you as a one-on-one, -on -one. and I also find Steiner very difficult to read. I have to read about four pages at a time. I read them twice, and then I have to sit and digest it. Because if I don't, I'll be off daydreaming, too. Um, he makes you think when you read what he has to say. So to read one of his books can take me a very long time. And Franco, I had read him before, and I actually did not go back and read him for the class. Um, but I also enjoyed his work, but he is much easier to read than Steiner is. Thank you. And, and Pauline? Uh, what struck me most is that Victor Frankl um, learns about the essence of life and how this could help him to um, uh, survive his um, giftedness. Um, the very tiny little things in life that had meaning to him and that he learned from it um, and that is so obvious about uh, his book and that struck me most. I read it, uh, well, within a week <laughs> time. Uh, uh, well, um, Franco's book strikes some kind of chord in me because um, every time I read it I, I I almost feel that I want to cry all the time. I can't explain why. It just, it, it just makes me uh, want to cry. For instance, the little thing about the woman dying and talking to the trees and getting unconditional love back from the trees. It, it strikes something special in me. At the same time, uh, he has a very psychological view of everything and a biological view of everything. And I'm not always thinking the way he does. On the other hand, the Steiner book makes me think more, and I, it takes longer time to read it. And while I'm reading it, I'm all the time I'm trying to process the information to uh, make it simpler for me to understand. So my my mind is going around all the time. Couldn't I put this in a simpler way? Can't this be explained in a simpler way? Because sometimes I feel that he's intellectualizing a lot of things and that's what makes us daydream because it, it, it becomes boring if we are not aware all the time while reading it. But then again when you read it and you really read it then you find the meaning in it. So I'm trying to make it easier for me to read Steiner and the lecture guide is excellent. Uh, it was really very very good written. Very um, uh, it explains it in a very, very easy way for me. The the um, the reason Fr Frankel was picked to contrast with Steiner is because he's such a great man. I mean, his life is certainly makes you just uh, either cry or something 
to relate to what a man that was. Mm -hmm. And also his local therapy. So even the, the, the word for his new form of Freudianism is very interesting because that's a, a entirely different attitude about psychology, psychiatry than, than Freud. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't go far enough. He's He's limits because he's under the spell of Kant. Now that's what makes the Steiner so difficult. Because exactly. Steiner has broken through to the spell that Kant has had over us all. We were all born and trained if we went to good schools. If we didn't go to school at all, we're, we're ahead of the game. Because, because uh, Kant has us limit what we can know, where Steiner says no, and of course this is a house of cards. It, it, Kant is not, if you really get into Kant, and anybody who follows Kant, which is everybody, you'll see it's a house of cards. It does not maintain itself, and anybody who's had spiritual experiences knows that, not through science, uh, philosophy, but through our own experiences. And I think all of us have had various experiences, some vast, some not so vast, but we've all had enough experiences so that we know that Kant is not telling us the truth. Exactly. It's, it's a passage here with, where he says, um, um, Logos is greater than logic. And that's exactly what it is, because when we remember who we really are, that's where we get logos from. Logic is something that we um, use as human beings. The logos is something more than that. So that's why he's, he, it's a house of cards, the Kant theories, because it won't give us the entire truth. We're going to get a portion of it, but not the entire truth. The amazing uh, spell we're under. I mean, so it's yes. amazing. <clears throat> and look at, and people go by the results. Look at the fantastic results to uh, thinking that there are limits to our uh, knowledge. I mean, all modern science is based on this kind of spell. Hmm. And uh, I'm able, I was able to reach my wife a tiny bit early this morning discussing this because she wanted to know how come and the reason for it is that this is what creates freedom the illusion that we're separate and that's yeah. the, yes yeah and that's why it is so also so important to become conscious of what you have just met or what your thoughts were just before an action um, occurred because it makes you consciously aware and and that it's not um, rare that you see such things or hear such things but that it really is there around for the person who has more awareness and for others yet to to discover so it's it, it, it's good to notice those things that um, that you can see also in movies nowadays that it's not rare, that, that it is. it's not fiction, in fact, it's non-fiction. You mean yeah, the, 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 the subject matter of movies? That's what you're talking about, Pauline? I'm sorry? You mean movies, what do you mean exactly by movies? Explain that a little bit. <coughs> well, lots of movies, like um, uh, Pan's Labyrinth, for example, or um, 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 how you call it, um, the Matrix, or um, um, or the, the, the from the Hobbit, the story of the Hobbit, mm -hmm. when you translate yeah. it a little bit, mm -hmm. or yeah. horror, sometimes even horror films. You can. There's a lot mm -hmm. of truth in it. A lot of ki mm -hmm. kind of um, science fiction movies are in fact. Uh, realistic movies. I think that um, we are, since we are creating our own reality and we are doing it with our thoughts, then um, 
knowing what we think is also knowing our reality and if we dare to think broader then we are the creators of this. That I may our way to make us smaller than we are because it's easier to control us <laughs> in a way. So I think that thinking is very important and because we are creating our reality by thinking, by knowing things. When we know something about the vast universe, then the universe expands for us because we know something about it. It's there all the time. But when we know something about it, that's when we experience it. So that's why knowledge is so important and that's why controlling knowledge is important to certain people. So I think that maybe that's what you're talking about, Pauline. That knowledge comes by, in my, in my opinion, by experience. And experience is by open your heart, and like you wrote in your um, 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 brief uh, thing that uh, Andrew read. And Watch when you open it to become more aware of, of things, you experience even more things. And when you can talk mm -hmm. about it with other people, who have the same kind of experience, you notice that a lot of people have those experiences and they're to talk um, uh, in, in certain circles about this. And then you start to read, for example, uh, you get, get classes like, for example, classic insights. And you get mm -hmm. even deeper knowledge and more deeper knowledge. And then you experience even a little bit more. And it yeah. just... Um, um, mm -hmm increases your, your awareness and then you see and hear things um, that in your former life it did not happen to be true to you. You thought it was ridiculous and mm -hmm. that there are all kinds of levels that are living next to each other on earth. That, that there are parallel lives that you can notice when you mm -hmm. switch and, and, and dare to experience it. And that makes, it makes life uh, great. Hmm. I think that expanding your knowledge, as we are doing with Classic Insights here, uh, creates a different kind of reality for us. Because if you have a forum and other people are thinking as you, then we are, there are more people creating the same reality. So this reality becomes the true reality. So that is why it's important to think about what we are thinking, because what we are thinking, we are creating. So we have a reality that we are creating by our thinking. I think that many people are not thinking, they are just going through life without thinking, and that's why others can decide what is going to be in their reality or not. We are doing it in a different way here because we want to create something else. We want to understand our reality and what we are creating. And that's I, unique, I think. I think it's true, the last sentence you said, it's, uh, that we want to know and, and experience the, uh, the, our existence. But I, I believe, reading lots of old books, um, that we uh, and, and, and uh, read lots of old energy, that nothing has changed on Earth yet, or in the universe, but that we are just trying to, and still trying to understand all those different um, uh, issues that are going around. And it's not that we create so much more, we just add a little bit, but that little bit is very, very tiny compared with what is already existing uh, or, or what is already existing uh, before the Big Bang. Uh, that's, <coughs> that's interesting what you mentioned, uh, Pauline, because uh, how do we experience freedom? Mm -hmm. I'd like uh, everybody to comment about that. Uh, I, uh, Kathy, uh, how do you experience freedom? Well, I think now I'm, I'm starting to really understand that Freedom is about how you react to things and not, you know, kind of like in Frankel where, you know, he's he's in this concentration camp and this horrific set of circumstances and freedom is about how he reacts to that. And and I'm starting to see that that's really what freedom is. You know, I, I can 
how I choose to think about whatever my circumstances are. Whoops, my computer's going to sleep here. There we go. Um, and I, I guess the, the best example for that recently that I found, I, uh, I started working at a new job about nine months ago, and I had a 45-minute commute. And I was so used to everything being so local, and it just irritated me to no end that I had this long commute. But here was this job that I really needed. And after about a week or two of listening to annoying radio where they were either doing nothing but talking about politics on talk radio or they were um, or listening to ads on music radio, then I realized I have a CD player in my car, and, and here's this opportunity to listen to um, all kinds of whatever I choose, you know. And, and mm -hmm. so all of a sudden, my 45-minute annoying commute became a gift because that was an hour and a half every day that I could just listen to. I have these um, courses put up by the teaching company on like history and literature and all kinds of stuff, and I can get books from the library and listen to you know all kinds of things. And all of a sudden, it, it, I, my commute didn't change, but my whole attitude about it did. And, and instead of it being an annoying part of my day, it was this tremendous gift to me that I have this extra time where I can listen to these these books and these courses and, and just, you know, really enjoy it. And so now I look forward to my commute. <laughs> so it's that kind of thing. It's, it's the freedom to choose that I'm really going to love this or I'm really going to hate it. And it, it's that kind of thing. And I'm really noticing that more and more in my life that, that that's what it's about. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's your attitude towards things, not the circumstances themselves. Uh, I want to interrupt. Walter, I think you're here. Walter, can you hear us? Can you talk? According to my panel, Walter is with us. Walter? He can't see you. Yeah, we can't see you. I, I hope you can hear us, Walter. Anyway, see if you can fiddle around more, Walter. See if you can see if we can see you and hear you. Meanwhile, we'll continue. Now, Kathy, that's very interesting. I think uh, that that's the beginning of freedom. Because uh, to, uh, to be, but that's wonderful. I mean, that's, I learned, that's how, that was my route to Steiner. Just like, exactly what you're describing, Kathy. But then with Steiner, I learned that, uh, that uh, freedom is connected with love in that there is no, there's no, nothing to react to. In other words, if you do something out of love and pure freedom, that's creative. In other words, you can create creativity, and this is being godlike. That's to create something out of nothing. So that's a beyond the state that you're describing, Kathy, which is marvelous. I mean, I, that's that changed my life around. I I went to seminar teaching me just that. I I uh, turned off my radio when I went to work, and it transformed uh, how I did my business. It made it so much more profitable and so much more wonderful by just using that free time to just concentrate on what I wanted to do. And the fellow who gave the lecture warned us all or said that you could use this not just for increasing your sales, but for anything in life by just concentrating and thinking, which is what Gordana has been mentioning. But then with Steiner, it goes much, much deeper than that. I was thinking about this, um, the freedom and what it means to me, and that uh, I keep thinking that freedom to me is to find the present in every obstacle. <laughs> when you encounter a, an obstacle, you find it, it, that it truly is a present, and you can create something good, uh, good out of it, no. not reacting oh, to that, it with a negative talking? Excuse me, is that Walter talking? Walter? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yes, slightly. very, very oh. slightly. See if you can increase your volume. Can you hear me? No, slightly. Well, okay, I'm sorry. Continue, Gordana. Let, let Walter figure no, it out. Yes, I, I was talking to what Kathy was mentioning and maybe going a little further, but not as far as you went, uh, Andrew. It's meeting every obstacle without getting negative feelings and finding the positive end to this obstacle because every obstacle has something positive with it. So if you want to feel freedom, you have to go beyond the obstacles and just 
finding what's good for you in every situation. And that's what Frankel does, and I think that that's what Kathy did in her car, and you maybe went beyond that with your things. Well, okay, okay so, so that, that's, the, that's what's so crucial here. What is mm -hmm. beyond that, which is wonderful. I mean, I'm, that's nothing wrong with Frankel, nothing wrong with these thoughts. Mm -hmm. But how do you, if you have an obstacle, that's something there already. Yes. And that's the, that's the problem with this kind of thinking. To, to be, and that's past thinking. That obstacles or anything in this world is past thinking. By the time you think about it, it's past. By, again, if you learn how to think about thinking, that's the only time where there's nothing there that's already there. But that's very hard to do, to think about thinking. But that's what we're doing with this conversation, and that's what we're doing with the uh, that Steiner book particularly, but not the Franco book. Mm. But that's very subtle. Pauline, you look like you want to say something. Yeah, it's very good what Cardana mentioned, because the more you do this practice and seeing what's good in a bad action or what is wrong in a kind of good action, the more you understand um, how the issues shown on your path and then you balance in the middle and then suddenly you you notice that it are no it are no longer hindrances or, or pitfalls. It's just, and, and it's no longer a burden for you, it's just something that happens and it, in fact it makes you glad and, and you, you, you become surrounded by love because mm -hmm. you, you see what's, what's going on and you accept it and you, 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 you have a, a balanced attitude towards it. It's like, for example, Jesus had of his lifetime towards the other person hanging next to him. <coughs> Connie, do you have anything to say about your freedom? Um, yes. Um, first of all, I, I use the word challenge instead of obstacles and mm -hmm. problems because mm -hmm. they're really opportunities. And yes, for me, exactly. freedom is this um, is awareness. And it's aware of whether I am acting or reacting. And reacting is when I am reacting from old programs and beliefs that I have not explored. And acting means that I'm in awareness and I have no preconception of what I'm supposed to be doing next. And it puts me into the flow of the creative force um, where I am um, not just ego thinking, but I have moved into essence thinking and it flows from me. Um, um, I think that, Andrew, you said it very well earlier, it comes from love. We have a choice. We can live in love or we can live in fear. And no, I don't live there 100% of the time. I waver back and forth because ego really likes to come forward and push itself into things. And so then I have to remember and become aware again to go back into being guided by my essence. That's what this program is all about, to get, uh, to help people to have that experience constantly, not just sometimes. And it it's, can be done. It can be done, but it takes work. It's not going to happen automatically. I think Walter's on again. But that's also why it is important to be so conscious about your your thoughts and your actions and what the impact is afterwards. Mm. You need to be aware before you act, react. Oh, oh but, but then be aware also what is the reaction to your action. Yeah, that's the, the, the key word is before. Mm. You know, that's, that's what's so hard for us to do, to get into that state of our consciousness and self, spiritual self-awareness so that there's a real before, so that there's nothing existing, and so our activities are out of freedom and love. I think that um, sometimes we are not given the time to think. We don't give ourselves the time to think before because we live in a society where everything is happening so fast that we don't have the time to think 
or we think that we don't have the time to think. But actually, we do have the time to think. We do have the time to make a choice in every second of our lives. But I think that we are conditioned to think that we don't have the time. So that's why we are always reacting instead of acting. I think that we need to back up a little bit and start taking it a little slower without even anybody else noticing it because it's up to us to make it slower. It's our thoughts that has to come, be, become a little bit slower so that we have the time to act instead of react, I think. Yeah, I think we all need a Twix moment when something happens. You know, yes. like those, those commercials. We need, we need to be able to be shoving something in our mouth before we answer and, <laughs> and, and think it through. And then once we swallow the food, we can answer yeah. the right thing. It's, it's yes. that kind of thing. It's funny how something that was meant to sell candy really had a profound idea in it, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. But I, I, I personally think that you don't need to think about it. Um, um, it's just about noticing what your thoughts are, what your feelings are, and to be conscious of, of it. Because then you have, uh, then you, you say something, or you react, um, or you act, and that has an, um, an outcome that you like or you don't like. And when you remember what your thoughts were, or you, or what you saw, or what you um, experienced, and understand the whole picture of what just happened. Uh oh, it's Walter trying to talk. Walter, you're 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 messing up. I, what, <laughs> what, Walter, do you want to call that? Uh, Help number. Walter, call that help number. Maybe they can help you. It's 1-800-263-6317. That's 1-800-263-6317. See if uh, they can help you. That's uh, the uh, GoToMeeting help desk. <clears throat> The the uh, what you said, uh, Pauline is. Uh, I, I said it's not. In my opinion, it's not about thinking. It's about experiencing what you thought before, what you saw, and um, because you saw more than you you can remember. And um, but when you you notice a little bit more what you saw, what you heard, what you thought inside yourself, and. Um, and then n notice how you reacted and why you reacted, um, or acted, or spoke. Uh, and then you notice the outcome, and you know whether you like the outcome or not. But that when you have those, this whole picture, um, you get a better insight in how your reality works for you. And what really happens, because sometimes it's just uh, our own thoughts and images that we had. You're bringing up a, a very interesting. You're bringing up a very interesting point, uh, Colleen, because uh, what you're talking about are higher levels of thinking that are not like the normal levels of thinking, which is reactive. Yeah. You're talking about inspiration imagination and intuition yeah. and those are higher levels of thinking that we can all get in touch with and we've all had those moments we just have to recognize what they are and then figure out how to repeat them now artists have this and then and you women however artistic you are or not we all have this creative artistic uh, part of us so it's a question, and you know, successful artists are, are afraid to talk about this because they're afraid that if they become conscious of what is creative, they'll lose their creativity. Yeah, I say no, it's important to really uh, understand this. And I believe it has become a kind of ridiculous because we have to speed up in time instead of to slow down, like Cardano mentioned. 
or uh, what we're experiencing is made ridiculous as if it's not existing, while it is existing, as everything is just existing. But we have to be allowed to experience it once more. Yes. Yes, and the reason for it is that uh, uh, we are uh, we are like filters, and we're filtering filtering most of reality from us, and that's to be able to get along in this I, quick unusual. I think uh, I think that um, well, I explain this to myself as everything is darkness around me, and my awareness is a searchlight. So where I put my awareness, that is what I will see in my reality. Everything exists, of course, but I am the one um, bringing light onto it, and that's why it exists in my reality. And I can be, uh, I can go outside of myself and start asking myself, why am I putting my light on this, and why is this important to me? Why am I reacting like this? Because all of us, we are not our feelings, we are not our bodies, we are not our brain. We are something beyond that. We are outside of that. <laughs> so that's why we can ask ourselves the questions, as Pauline said. Why am I reacting like this? Why is this happening afterwards? So that is a higher level of thinking. Yes, I think so too. I'm a retired art therapist, and I'm also a practicing artist. And I found that working with the creative arts with people help them explore their beliefs and their reacting instead of thinking ahead of time of, and acting instead. And of course, because you as a therapist need to be also in, in, um, ahead of any clients you're working with, when I would paint, I would journal afterwards and I would write down what I had learned and thought and what I saw in my artwork that I had done. And this helped me to become more aware of the things that were rolling around in my subconscious that I was not perhaps taking an awareness of. And, and all artists put something of um, their subconscious into their art. Hopefully most of them become aware of what they're doing, um, but not all of them do. And some art is abstract and you look at it and you think, well, I'm not seeing any subconscious in there. But in actuality, you are. You're seeing patterns and colors and you're seeing how that artist painted and their particular mood or something. So all art has a message to everyone. Mm -hmm. And our, the idea of doing art many times is to simply figure out what's going on in your mind. Visualizing it. <laughs> yeah, or even if you're a dancer, the movement, what's it's happening action. in your body. Mm -hmm. it's action. Yeah, well, I it's, a, it's a great <coughs> help, I, I agree. Hmm. It's really trying to make art uh, a, a much more important part of your self-conscious awareness because that's really mm -hmm. how you touch the spirit through art. And the trouble with our civilization is that it's it's not art-based. It's uh, it's um, uh, what I call um, intellect-based, the brain-based. Mm -hmm. So it's very much. This is, uh, we're at the cusp of changing our uh, way of civilization from a, uh, a brain-based to uh, both heart and brain-based. Not one or the other, but both. Mm -hmm. And that's a struggle for people, particularly people who are just so attached to the brain, they, uh, they're hard to reach. I've been trying all these years to reach these kind of people. And I work with these people. This is my life. Mm -hmm. And I could not able to reach almost no one or maybe zero. Those people uh, I was not able to reach at all. And instead mm -hmm. I'm able to reach mainly women. But uh, Walter is one. And the other one, uh, Gordana introduced me to Bill, is very much mm -hmm. uh, reachable. So. And and, you know, many times I would get referrals from other therapists, from clients that were so stuck in their head that they couldn't get anything. And then they would come into art therapy and we would start getting them out of that um, brain in, into their mm -hmm. heart and combining it. So I think art is, is really a, a great thing to help people heal and to move and become more enlightened. 
I was very, I was friendly with a person who started uh, music therapy for uh, retarded children. Mm -hmm. That was such a, a opener for me to see mm -hmm. the entirely different attitude about music and how music could be used as therapy. It's what you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Connie, with what you do. It's a powerful, powerful tool. And I was very, very fortunate to work with art, with music therapists and dance therapists, and we would work as a team with people. Because when you bring in more than one modality, because it seems to, it goes to a much deeper level with people. So when I actually worked as an art therapist, I used music and movement and meditation and journaling and whatever mm -hmm. I could bring into it. Excellent, because you, when you are used on the cognitive level, you, you can imagine you are standing in, on one leg and when you um, embrace the other part within yourself um, like you do, you, you can create the other leg to it and you can move forward and you um, can become more grounded because the two of them have to cooperate like in your brain you have to cooperate with the, so, uh, the two brain halves. And that's what you learn to people, so that's great. I was thinking about something. We were talking about the people that um, uh, are very hard to reach with this kind of knowledge, the people that live in their brains mostly. And I, I've seen a pattern where when I try to talk to people like that, they get very angry. And I don't, I don't understand why do they get angry? What, what is the cause? Why do they get so angry when you start talking about these kind of things? Do you have any answers <laughs> on that? Well, I know from my own... It's like the anger comes from fear. Yes. They're, they're afraid of something. They're afraid of being pulled out of, of their current comfort safety zone. net. Yeah, comfort yes. zone. Yeah, exactly. And, and being pushed into some total unknown, even though it would be a great thing for them. You know, that, that totally sounded like fear to me. Well, I know personally, uh, you're absolutely right. That's the answer. I know from myself, when I would talk to people, first of all, when I uh, awakened, I had to leave my business. I had to leave Wall Street I, because a man is very much attached to livelihood. And that's how, ah, here you are, Walter. <laughs> Hello. <I won't. laughs> uh, just tell us briefly what happened and how you got on. Oh. Can't hear him. <laughs> Can't hear you. Turn your turn your button Mike. so we can hear you, Walter. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes we can hear you. <laughs> what happened? Hi, girls. Hello. I'm in, Canada, I'm in Canada again, and I couldn't log on with the iPad that I was using previously. Oh. And then I tried to log on with a regular computer where they had no microphone, no camera. <laughs> and now I tried again and they logged on. So uh, unfortunately it's near the end and there was been, uh, I could hear most of it. It was been a very interesting session. Well, I've, I've, I've recorded this so I'll send you all a recording of, of the session. Awesome. I want, to make, I want to join so badly but <laughs> this technology was not allowing me. <laughs> well, do you have anything to say now that you have the chance? Oh my gosh, I found this, uh, I read the whole Frankel book and the lecture and the, uh, half of the Steiner. Steiner is hard to read, but I'm, I'm coming to new realities all the time. And, uh, Frankel, uh, he stopped short of the implying a spiritual side of us, I think. I don't know. He's, he stops it in the, in the biological side of us, where Steiner goes beyond the physical. And uh, there's something to learn from both of them, you know. Franco says you have a choice no matter what your circumstances are. And some people make the choice, some don't. I mean, some of those people in the prison camp give up totally. Some of them fought and hung on and made the conscious decision. I guess they, they transcended the physical body and got to the, in touch of the spiritual part of them that allowed them to continue on under the, those terrible circumstances. Well, I guess Steiner takes it from there. 
that's my, what I'm getting out of this is, is that keeps going on. And um, with freedom, uh, I guess when you talk about freedom, you have to talk about responsibility. And the two are, this, I feel, are this two sides of the same coin. So in the lecture guide, it's interesting because near the end it talks about uh, the will and why we motivate to do things, you know, the four types of motivation from ego to moral to ethical to, I think the last one has to do with love or, that one is hard to comprehend and I mean, that's what I want to get more involved in. I understand the first three items of the will, but that one, to have pure motivation out of some internal love feeling to do the right thing to be good. Uh, that part there, um, I need to work on it further. Well, that, that's very helpful to, to hear your struggle because that's what this is all about. How do you get so you can understand and practice love? It's, it's not that easy. People talk about love, 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 love you, love you, love you. It's all just words, all abstractions. But Walter, what you're talking about is really how to come to grips and how to experience it and then use it. Now, an example right. that goes back to what we we're talking about with art, I went to a lecture by this founder of uh, music therapy for retired children. He had a drummer there that he was working with with a severely retarded child. And it just took about 10 minutes. And the audience, it was a Hunter College audience, and the student asked, well, is this, uh, is this a severely retarded person going to become normal? And so the answer was, that's, that's not the question. Look at how we've turned this, this child from, in 10 minutes, right, by drums, we've expanded his sense of consciousness. So to me that was a revelation because I was so brain-centered. But that's what this love was doing, accomplishing. Accomplishing this expansion of consciousness by this severely retarded child. So that's an example of what we're all about and what love is all about. Really, how do you really, uh, first of all, be creative, figure out a, a brand new way of, of uh of reaching retarded children, and then to prove it by 10 minutes to show how effective that beat, that expansion of the of the child's sense of the beat could be. But Walter, that's what you're struggling with in an intellectual way, which is what Steiner is presenting, yeah. to do this through an intellectual way, but he was very much an artist too. And I guess I'm stuck so in an intellectual myself, you know. I this, think this whole society uh, seems to be based on that. I think that uh, when we truly are ourselves, that is when we act out of love. But when we are always, we are always trying to be normal or trying to be as everybody else wants us to be. So we lose ourselves, and that's why it's hard for us to do things for, out of love, because when when we are ourselves, we do things out of love. I'm sure that every soul on earth is constructed that way, that we do things out of love when we are in touch with our soul. I don't know if I'm making any sense here, but no, you that's are. what I think. And that's what I meant by a house of cards. This is a house of cards. Our economy, our whole world is based on a house of cards. We are all in this to love one another, even in economics. We're all working for others, and it's proven, but we don't accept the proof. We just go our merry way and go by ego brain thinking, when it's true that this is the reality of things. We are love beings. Well, we're trained to be love beings if we can just surmount this brain thinking. Well, and I, I think when you said, you know, is, is this child going to be normal again? Well, what is normal? Exactly. I always said normal was too hard to live up to. It was much easier to live up to being, you know, abnormal or maybe 
the difference between sane and crazy. I'd rather be crazy. It's much more fun, you know. Or, or uh, as as they said in Young Frankenstein, um, Abby something, Abby normal. <laughs> exactly. I I wrote a tweet the other day that uh, where I said that um, why are we all trying to be normal when we are perfectly unique? I don't understand why are we trying to be normal and what is normal? Why can't we just be unique? Because that's when we will emanate love, because we will be content with ourselves. We will not strive to be something that we are not, because we already are all that is. It's, it's illogical for me, this reality that we have created. That's why I love the title from normal to healthy. Mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't Steiner talk about that part of the duality within us from percept to feeling we're individual, but to, through thinking we're united with the world totally. So mm -hmm. we have this part of us one way and part of us the other way. So the idea is to integrate now all of this together so that you know, come out of war. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, that's the... the, the, um, the as far as I got with the Steiner book, I'm getting that feeling that thinking is universal. Everybody, everybody can uh, at least sense-free, uh, sense-free perceptive thinking. Well, that that's very. Is that correct? Yes. The way you, you interpret this, right? Or? Yes, and that's that's very interesting because that's the easiest way to see it is a concept of a circle or a concept of a triangle. That's a universal, it doesn't matter what your race, religion, or culture is, that's pure thinking of a circle. And it's a reality that this world doesn't accept as a reality. We think that the reality are the particular circles and the particular triangles that we draw or make. But that comes from the concept. So the more we get in touch with the concept of ourself, we will have a concept of ourself that's ideal. The more we get in touch with that, the more we'll be in touch with others who are striving for that same uh, ideal of ourself. So, Walter, you're uh, absolutely right. That's one, what that's one, the work one is. More, one more observation that I thought came across also was that consciousness is a combination of perceptive events weaved through by thinking and this thinking weaves through the, all these perceptions and puts them together in some kind of relationship and it's consciousness. Is this correct? Yes. Or is it, am I doing this correctly? Uh, yes, and that's why people who, who ignore what you just said, they're the ones that contribute to this house of cards. They want to forget about the observer. You're talking about the observer hmm. Uh, Walter, you're talking about the observer, yeah. and that's what we have to get in touch with. What is the observer who is observing these things, who are putting the concept and the percept together? That's uh, easier said than done. <laughs> I'm trying to get there. That's our work. Uh, I was thinking about when a child asks, why is it so? And somebody answers, because. The because is what you were talking about now, Andrew, how the world uh, we live in doesn't want an observer. The child is an observer and the child wants to know and we are like the child. We want to know because we observe. And when we start asking questions but we don't get any answers back, we accept what is. And I think that we all need to continue asking questions as you are doing, Walter. <laughs> That's the only way to go through reality. That's the core Gordana. problem. Exactly that, Gordana. That's the core of our problem. Unexamined presuppositions. We want to forget about that. Uh, go, 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 Diana, um, yes, yes. We always get an answer, but we, but the answer is by experience. But when you have closed your experience, you can't perceive the answer. So just being open for an answer, whether it comes from another person, uh, the blue sky, uh, mm -hmm. an animal, or a plant, or just an imagination. Mm -hmm. There's That's always an answer to a question, and then mm -hmm. you become a knower. You know a little bit more. 
Mm. Now that's why the book that uh, that uh, this is about intuitive thinking as a spiritual path. That's to experience thinking itself. Mm -hmm. It's doing just what Pauline is suggesting, but to to do it through our thinking, to experience our thinking, to think about thinking. Yes, we're, so we're trying to get conscious of that. Well, I am not yet. <laughs> very, very hard. Because as soon as you think about a thought, it's past. Connie, you wanted to say something. I said. Yeah, yes, you were talking about being unique, and I spent uh, one of my Toltec retreats on top of the Sun Pyramid. I sat there and explored my um, desire to be unique, and I decided that that really wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to be authentic. And I think there's a subtle difference between the two because we are all unique, mm -hmm. and so therefore if we're all unique, we're not unique. And, and it boiled down to be that I wanted to be authentic. That was my desire. And I have to be in a way to be authentic. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we have, uh, we've been given a lot to think about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have a week to uh, think about thinking. And then, the Steiner uh, book is a, is a tough book to read, but I I tell you, that's a lot of important. The write-up was really great. Who did the write-up? You, Andrew? No, that's a that's a very close friend of mine who got me interested in Rudolf Steiner. And that's a that's a good story in itself. He he uh, ran into Steiner when he was at college, and read it and didn't read it. This very book, he read and then didn't read it, and then years later he had a family and his children went to the Steiner school. And that's what got him involved with Steiner again. And uh, then he said he talked about Steiner to me. We were very close friends. Uh, and I didn't hear him talk about Steiner at all. I was too much involved with business. That's why I know just what you're all talking about. And then uh, uh, I had uh, I had a very, very, he, he get, for a birthday present, he gave me a a couple of Steiner books, and I saw he was Christ-centered, which is what, 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 what neither Frankel nor Steiner mentioned. They don't use the word Christ in this, but you'll see that Christ relates to just what we're talking about in terms of the, the ideal self. That's the logos in ourselves, and that's how Christianity relates to this, but not traditional Christianity, but, but uh, real Christianity. Anyway, he... Uh, He's still a very close friend of mine, and he he's very brilliant, and I think that's a wonderful, wonderful uh, write-up. And uh, next week we'll talk yep. more about that. And, and uh, yeah, he's um, pretty well advanced. So next week, same time, same station, same. And Walter, you'll be with us, and then I'll send you all the recording. Thank, Thank you, you for a very, with, very good you. session. I'll, I'll be with you from my home place, so I shouldn't have no technical difficulties. Very good. Very <laughs> good. Thank you all. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank all you right. so much. Bye. Nice to see all of you. Huh? Good week.